Thank you very much for your interest in my paper Bipedal Running Bio-Inspired Fundamentals for Versatile Humanoid Robot Locomotion. The paper was presented at the IEEE RAS Humanoids Conference 2023 in Austin, Texas. If you think about bipedal running, you will most likely think about ASIMO, CASI or ATLAS running. They already achieved tremendous results back in the days. But if you now take a look at the state-of-the-art humanoid robots appearing at the IEEE RAS Humanoids Conference 2023, you will notice that most of these robots are not able to run yet, but want to achieve that in the future. This, my goal was to add bio-inspired fundamentals to the toolbox of humanoid robotics engineers. And for this, my structure was as follows. At first a biomechanical review, then deducing the mechanisms and robotic concepts, before finishing with the guideline for the application. The underlying model was concentrating on the sagittal plane of the lower body of the human. So let's start running. So the first bio-inspired fundamental is about impacts and running results in repetitive impacts at touchdown. And this might be one of the reasons why Blicken created his famous spring mass model for running and jumping. If you now take a deeper look into the model, you will see that the ground reaction force is shaped like a perfect inverse parabola. And this is also heavily used in inverse dynamic control. Now, if we take a look at the real system, you will always have an effective or also called unsprung mass, which results in a force shock in our ground reaction force. Now, we can take a look at the human. And the human has three different food postures for running. A rear foot and a midfoot food posture, where the heel will touch the ground, and a forefoot foot posture, where the heel never touches the ground. And this reduces the unsprung mass. Now, we further want to reduce the force shocks in our ground reaction force. And we can do that with viscoelastic elements. For example, like the human with the fat bubbles in his heel. Now, we might still have residual force shocks. This, we need to choose impact resistant actuators, like series elastic actuators, where we have a spring in series with our load and the gearbox, to protect the gearbox teeth from the high force shocks. Now, let's go to the next bio-inspired fundamental. And this is about energy storage. So, we are again using the spring mass model, which uses a kinetic energy. And now, due to our serial elastic actuation, we have springs in each joint. And these sum up to a virtual linear leg stiffness. Now, taking a look at the knee stiffness of a human at 3.5 meter per second, we will find that there is a stance phase in orange and a swing phase in dotted blue. The stance phase is quite stiff with 547 newton meter per hour, while the swing phase is nearly slack with 18 newton meter per hour. This stiffness is gate phase dependent, which might be a reason why Alex Bartish Burwitz used clutches in his famous bird bot design. Now taking a look at the human joint stiffness from 2.6 to 6.5 meter per second in the stance phase, you can see that the ankle and knee are varying a lot, from approximately 300 to 1200 newton meter per hour. So to achieve a versatile running locomotion, you need variable stiffness. Now let's go to the next bio-inspired fundamental, which is about natural dynamics. Here we are using the near-zero swing phase stiffness, which enables the natural dynamics. So we are using the stiffness in this red area, which is nearly zero, and it also converges to zero in the late stance phase. If we now have a ground reaction force in the late stance phase pushing us upwards, we can easily deflect our knee. And this is called knee recovery. And why this is helpful, we can explain due to the center of mass of each segment, summing up to the center of mass of the leg, and then taking the distance to the hip joint. And you will see, in the consecutive swing phase, the distance will reduce. And you also see that with this runner, which increases the velocity and this also increases his knee recovery motion. And this is very helpful, 
as this shapes the inertia for faster swing times. You can also see that as the human joint stiffens of the hip from 2.5 to 4.5 meter per second is not very a lot. And what you can also see with the stiffness is that the hip stiffens at 4.5 meter per second can be replicated with one spring for the stance and swing phase. And it's approximately 133 newton meter per rad stiff. So we can potentially use a parallel spring here, but we need to take care as this might decrease our versatility. Let's go to the next bio-inspired fundamental, which is about couplings. Couplings are biasing one joint characteristic to another. And with this, I want to explain how we can achieve this push-off from the ground, which we used in the natural dynamics. And here, we're using the largest muscle in the human muscul musculoskeletal system, the gluteus maximus. It's a hip extensor. So if we activate it, we get a hip extension. Now we are coupling this muscle with biarticular muscles with isometric contractions. So no length change intended. Here we're using the rectus femoris. It's a biarticular muscle, so spanning over two joints. It's a hip flexor and knee extensor. Now if we activate the gluteus and the rectus together, we're not getting the intended motion. So we need to couple another muscle, the gastrocnemius muscle. The gastrocnemius muscle is a knee flexor and ankle plantar flexor. So if we now again activate them all together, we're getting a push-off motion. Now we need to take care that this is a fictional torque equilibrium position, but still explains the model well. And with couplings, we are enabled proximal motor positioning, shared actuator loads incre which increase the power output in one direction, but we need to take care as this increases the geometric work. So some motions are costly to achieve due to the active couplings. Now to wrap up, for impacts we should use a forefoot posture and viscoelastic damping, for energy storage recall the spring energy and use very heavy stiffness, for natural dynamics have a low stiffness or use the clutch mechanism, and shape your inertia. And for couplings, use proximal actuation, but take care that might decrease your versatility. Now, to conclude, this work acts as a guideline and toolbox for further human robot developments. So, I want to enable parameters for your optimization framework. You can find more interesting mechanisms and concepts in my paper, as well as in my last paper about oblique axes. The paper can be found on ResearchGate or IEEE Explorer. Thank you very much for your attention.